Happy Independence Day. It's Monday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Elijah Nima Akasha Zibiri, how are you doing this morning? Fine. I'm well how was your said. independence weekend? Yeah, it was uh, busy and restful. So my mother-in-law returned from the village. Oh, nice. So she's back. Lots of goodies. Of course. <laughs> from the farm. Fresh farm. Yeah. Believe me, I like fresh farm. Yams. The gary well made. Everything, everything. Wow. House was full. So we're just there. But I slept all through. After unpacking. Sleep. <laughs> I was just, I don't what know caused the sleep? May I ask? I should be asking you, ladies, <laughs> because the last public event I had, you guys were alcoholizing your champagne, <laughs> and I was <laughs> taking my sugar. <laughs> they were alcoholizing. Did you people pour something inside my cup? Is Mariah that was champagne? No, in the case, I was juice. Mike had four bottles. I'm saying it on national TV, and she's the she's the was also on top of it. Yes, she's the one that. Instigated everybody. She's the influence. Yeah, so so she'll yeah. finish me I tomorrow. I just well, I I I I I want tea. I want mm. juice. Mm. Mm. Just my orange juice. They won't believe me. I, I do see it. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I'm doing great. It was a lovely weekend. So from the Friday hangout that we went there, I must confess, if people know, I'm more Yoko. All of us drank. What was that? Nima. Hey, some people had three glasses, some had two, some, you know, we all drank. <laughs> well, it was a good uh, weekend. Then Saturday, what happened Saturday? Uh, I was basically home, so I've been going back and forth to the hospital because of my mother-in-law. She's mm. still recuperating in the hospital, so I have to go take food, you right. know, just care for them. The house was basically full. Then on Sunday, I went to House on the Rock. That's my church mm. when I'm on the okay. island. Nice. And uh, Pastor T.D. Jakes. Yep, yep. Scattered the ground. Was in a, ah, and I appreciated how God makes us differently. Yeah. Everybody cannot go through this way, talk quietly, talk. His craziness is what brings the word alive. It was a very impactful one. I watched Thursdays and it was powerful. Ah, it was. Unfortunately, I was so busy over the weekend. I, I was there. Then the praise worship, forget. Yeah. On another level, yeah. that yeah. church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you hear people sing, they're like, whoa. Whoa, this is boys. Oh, ah, no. They should be signed up. Good. Yeah, that is nice. good. Fantastic. That's good, good. I, I, I mean, after hanging out, I had um, an event with the Pastor Olumide Manu. I went to speak for his event. Myself and Ayomako were there. It was really nice to speak on sustaining, how we sustain the brand, your view, mm. all this well. And then I was called by that way to Abuja for a meeting. I had a few friends hanging out there. It was really, I had this Arabian tea. I don't know how I'm going to get this tea to Lagos. Ah. In fact, I need the distribution rights. You didn't take some? They, they, already, they already made, made it. The tea. Oh. I, had to, I, need, I need the they said that I had to get all the various herbs and brew it myself. Oh. Man, if you try good. this tea. Me, I don't like tea. Like coffee, I didn't I'm surprised that tea. you're... Oh my you know God. this Meshai that's carrying this kettle on? Mm. They never they make um, you know, teas in tea bag. They brew it. They are all on the Sahel. They come with all the hats. Yeah. Those are the things they that they said, packaged into a proper. Hey, he even stayed, the person even said, yes. from those Meshai, yes. they bought it. Yes. Wow. And brewed it. So I yes. said, you can't find the Meshai. Yes, buy let's buy those. I, 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 I need to hire him. And when you see them, yeah, you'll you, 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 you be afraid to taste oh what they're carrying. Oh, my Lord, that thing the was. The first time somebody gave me good herbs. No, 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 no. no. This, like, that's a different I tried something like that in Dubai. You know, they have herbs. I don't know where they bring because Dubai is not, it's not supposed to have anything, but they bring all of that from different That's Arabian okay. countries. Uh, the teas were... But fun in Abuja. It was very refreshing. I enjoyed my stay there. I was at a hotel, lounge. I just enjoyed myself, hung out. It was, it was, it was a time of the stress of Lagos. So you had a rest. I had, had a good, good, good time. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a quick break. When we return, look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Tinubu okay's more relief package for workers and others. How 63rd independence anniversary was marked. 70-year-old nabbed over London-bound drug shipment. CSU ordered to release Tinubu's non-privileged documents to Atiku. Um, steer clear of revoked property, FCTA warns landowners. Boar slashes cement X factory price to 3500 per bag. No plea bargain yet with Emifile, says AGF. Okay. Which story is that? Wiki okay, is breezing Abuja. So he said that the owners of the over 165 plots of land that were revoked by the FCTA administration as the Federal Capital Territory Administration are warned to stay away from such properties. That any one of them found tampering with the revoked land will be severely dealt with. In the same story, he talked about the bike riders moving around Abuja that, you know, presently they are being confiscated and destroyed, that very soon they will extend the punishment to them themselves. That's, they will punish the riders, not just confiscate their bikes. And he also talked about looking at pushing the cattle railers out of the city center mm. in Abuja to the, to the um, you know, the suburbs in uh, Abuja, saying that he's not saying that the cattle must leave Abuja, but they cannot be seen in the city center. They, there's an image that the city itself must carry, mm. and it's not one of cattle just freely moving around. He says that they will invite those cattle wearers mm. to a meeting where they will all sit down and talk about it and, you know, give them heads up on how they will go so that there will be no body just, you know, there's no witch hunting. Also mm -hmm. called. Right. Mm -hmm. So BUA, uh, <coughs> BUA Cement PLC has announced the reduction in the X factory price of the cement to three three thousand five hundred per bag, and they are saying, mm -hmm. and they are going to further reduce after the completion at the first quarter of uh, twenty twenty four, and they are also saying that those people who have already booked the cement mm -hmm. ahead of time will also have uh, booked and paid will also have a further reduction so that this three thousand five hundred will be added to what they are going to pay so they're going to be paying less than they have paid for before as a way to support this is right, good for yes. people who are building yes this is good for, what we are good for competition as well and i pray you know the way these capitalist things work i pray this boy is not blocked somehow <laughs> from achieving yes. this yeah <laughs> well, now. let's talk about the 63rd independent anniversary that was the first one actually for our current president so our president was ushered into the forecourt at the venue of the event yesterday where he was led um by a 14-man presidential pipers dressed in Scottish attire, uh, and also um, the key, one of the key significance of the uh, of the event yesterday was the change of guard, which re was regarded as a symbolic handover of the state's control from the colonial British authorities to the indigenous rulers. Now, what was also very important and significant about yesterday's event was the first lady's speech, where she spoke at the Thanksgiving service. She was speaking. Um, she said that um, we just came back from Onga 78. It was really successful for us as a nation, the world that awaits Nigeria. We came back with good news. And all we inherited are things that have happened many years ago. My husband is not a magician. He is going to work brick by brick. And I believe and hope that you will have faith in his administration. Uh, he, she expressed uh, her, um, her gratitude to God for enabling her to celebrate the, um, the Independence Day and National Christian Center as a first lady. And she was saying that she brings warm greetings. You know what I mean? She was really just excited and talking about the fact that we must continue to believe and trust our husband's administration mm. to move this country forward. Mm. Okay, let's move on. We want okay. to another story? Yes, another story quickly. So, uh, except to Jenneren, that's NDLA doing their work again. Uh, he's a grandpa, Adomai Ugungwa, was arrested at the weekend in Dindire village, Tofa local government of Kano State, with 143.2 kilograms of skunk. They also went ahead to arrest Ubiora Chigoze Samuel, a drug kingpin, who has been wanted uh, you know, for shipping illicit drug consumption to the United Kingdom. So initially, um, they spotted him, I think, September 15. They've been looking for him when he shipped consignment of uh, 1,500 kilograms of skunk concealed in flour that was being transported to the UK. So he felt that that one had passed, but they had you know, gotten him, waiting for him to come again. So he rolls into the airport again uh, with... Um, 1,500 kilogram consignment. Okay, after he thought that one sailed through, he carried another tranche of 2,000 or 2.5 um, 
0.00 kilogram concealed in cartons at the airport for shipment to the UK when he was caught red-handed. Mm. So they went to, they continued with the list of all the people they caught during this period and this weekend as well. Well done, NDA. Okay, the punch. FG case uh, uh, allowance for senior staff, Libor may suspend strike. Independence Day APC berates PDP as opposition falls in Boost speech. One dies, seven injured in Lagos, Ibadan Expressway crash. No plea bargain agreement with Emir Fili, says AGF. Chicago academic record, Tinubu lawyers kick as court orders release. FG issues first wholesale gas supply. The commercial activities along the gas value chain and the federal government issued a, the first wholesale gas license for 500 million cubic, um, standard cubic feet of gas per day to an indigenous company called the Uhuru Trading Limited. And that company is supposed to help <coughs> guide commercial activities. For those of us who have been criticizing that when we did CNG take off and how will it work, we are seeing you know some of these things. The, the chief executive officer of the midstream of Nigeria midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority, Farouk Ahmed, presented the license to the Uhuru Trading Limited on behalf of the government on Saturday in Abuja. And we are going to see the effect of it very soon. The complete story is in the punch if you want more details, but mm, I'm hoping okay. to see that this would not only uh, create employment along the, uh, that chain to people, it will also ease those of us who are looking for the alternative to mm. petrol. Yeah. So, a uh, major headline, the federal government uh, yesterday said the provisional wage increase announced by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for all low-income workers for six months will cut across all treasury-paid workers, meaning uh, that's according to Femi Bajabi and Mila, there's nothing like low-income workers. It's going to just spread across all the workers. So, that's uh, 25,000 naira added to their salaries. So, he, um, the president, Femi Bajabi Amiladas, chief of staff to the president, uh, was the one who said this at the state house correspondent at the end of a four hour marathon emergency meeting with leaders of organized labor. And um, they are hoping that with this new increment, they will suspend the proposed strike that was supposed to start tomorrow. However, uh, labor leaders are rejecting the 25,000 naira provisional wage increments for low-grade workers. According to them, they said uh, they cannot um, allow it for just six months. It has to continue till they uh, you know, conclude on another minimum wage. And that's when they can now lift that. And also, it should be increased to 35,000 naira additional, not 25,000 naira. Mm -hmm. So we don't know now if um, the strike is going to commence tomorrow. We await to hear for that. Yeah, from NLC. Yeah, so many okay, so I have the. Okay, let's go to a quick break. When we return, we continue with our review. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues 
And last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. Doubt and feared. Thanks for staying with us, still reviewing the, the paper. So, um, the Chicago Academic Records, the lawyers at, APC lawyers at kick concerning the, um, the articles request for Tinan Wu's records, according to the papers, the United States District Court in Northern District of Illinois has ruled in favor of Atiku Abu Bakr and ordered the Chicago State Police, uh, State University to release the president's records. Uh, but he's in, he's in, but Tinubu's lawyers have insisted that the documents may not be relevant in Tinubu's appeal against the Supreme Court, especially because all evidences should have been provided bef at, the, at the final of the p petition. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the fact that even if you bring in the records, according to uh, have the, the spokesperson or Sabdala in an interview with Point said those, if he was convinced that um, it has nothing to do with so let me take somebody else. That's not him. Uh, was somebody else from the Tinubu's camp, Mr. Uluwale Afolabi? Yes. He was saying that the um, he was reacting to the report, saying that even if the new evidences are provided, it will not affect um, the current proceedings that are going on to the Supreme Court. So um, I have at the submitted moment. earlier. I have the no plea bargain agreement. So the AGF, through the spokesperson for the Ministry of Justice, Mudukwe Ogundaro, says that the room, the news flying around that the federal government, or, I mean, his office on yeah. behalf of the federal government, has reached a no plea. A no prosecution plea bargain with the former governor of the CBN is false. He said that this might be based on the on the statement from his legal team when they said at the last trial in August that they would go into a plea bargain with the federal government, but that the federal government have not gone into a plea bargain with them for any reason, and that um, story is false. Okay, um, moving on now to Daily Sun. Strike, FG makes concessions, labor to consult organs. Nigeria bleeding pirates right at uh, Tinubu. IPOP disowns Biafra Liberation Army, says group led by EPA. Black Independence Day, many born to death as tank explodes on failed Benisapele Road. Peter Obi urges Nigerians to be hopeful for better tomorrow. <coughs> Soludo renames Anambra Cargo Airport after Chino Achebe. And FG has no 50 billionaire plea bargain deal with Emir Felicis, Justice uh, Minister. Okay. Which story are we taking in Daily Sun? So the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB are disassociating themselves from a new pro-Biafra group known as Biafra Liberation Army, BLA. And um, the spokesperson of um, IPOB, Ima Powerful, made a statement that he released to the newsmen yesterday and said that the group is led by Simon Epa, that's this new group. And, you know, he reacted to a viral video by a member of the group who had worn the camouflage and IPOB insignia, uh, saying that um, his members have not degenerate, degenerated to violence in their quest for a Biafra nation, that um, the global family and movement of IPOB, led by Onyendu Ma Zenam Dikanu, wishes to state unequivocally that Biafra struggle uh, championed by IPOB has nothing to do with the so-called Biafra Liberation Army and or governments in exile. And um, they said that they yeah, have millions of people who are fighting for the restoration of Biafra. Yeah, uh, Biafra is not a... Um, IPOB is not a government. It doesn't have an army, nor does it have anybody uh, in government anywhere in the world. So they are just a peaceful group that are just agitating for Biafra. So anybody who's coming up to say that they have a government, they have an army, is not Biafra. It's being led by somebody else, Simon Eba. Okay. Okay. Sad um, um, Independence Day. I mean, how was it carried? Black. 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 Independence Day. So the an accident that was confirmed by the sector commander for the Federal Road Safety Corps in Delta State, Mr. Udeme Basi Eshet, um, ha, uh, took place on the wee, in the wee hours early morning on Sunday yesterday, and it was a tanker that fell on its side, caught fire, and burnt every car and human beings are along his <coughs> so, <coughs> so about 15 vehicles were destroyed confirmed by the sector commander of course and seven people in um, sustained injuries eight burnt beyond recognition wow. and this accident happened between the Olobo 
uh, in, uh, between Olobo and Koko, that's Olobo in Edo State and Koko in Delta State on the Benin Sapele Road. This road, of course, is being over and over in the news yeah. about the state of the road and how bad where road users, survivors were see heard in the story the accounts of it saying that this has continued to cost people's life that it did not exceed 30 minutes ordinary within 30 minutes of the falling of the tanker all the cars on the road everything just burnt like that people were just decrying the state of the road in this report i'm hoping that the federal government is on top of this and um, the former governor omai is listening in on this news mm. this road should be prioritized yeah. Because it cannot continue to cost people's Absolutely. lives. I heard of the story before reading it this morning from a relative who was able to just escape mm. and see the inferno behind him okay. yesterday morning. Sometimes about the camera, I know um, the, the minister at some point was criticizing some some contractors. Yes. They were giving money that not do the job. So I know we, he's policing it, but he, they need to do much more because there are people who are giving the money to do it but refuse to do their job. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to highlight that. So, you know, there's also the issue of funding. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the House of Reps and say, we exactly. continue to, to remove certain yes. projects, let's prioritize this. So it's multifaceted. Former minister tried his best on a lot of those yeah. rooms, visiting them, and, yeah. but funding is still an issue. You're absolutely correct. Governor Solido, my second favorite governor. <laughs> Ghana State has renamed the state international passenger and cargo airport after Lechino Achebe. Achebe. Oh. Achebe is a Nigerian novelist, poet, critic, gave African literature and identity, and the voice he rightly um, he uh, reconstructed and redefined the identity of people. He said the governor said Achebe is not just an Igbo uh, hero or a number of hero or a Nigerian hero, but he's an African, a pan-African hero that must be celebrated. He said that uh, unfortunately. There are many unsung heroes, um, African heroes, like Chino Achebo. Uh, he said that some people are wrong, uh, wrongly think of legacies in terms of brick and mortar, but legacy is about impact on human life. Mm -hmm. Achebo was not a president, a governor, a military man. He did not build bridges or roads or airports, but he would outlive most presidents, governors, and ministers, especially for what he has done. Achebe rejected Nigeria's national honors twice in protest against what he perceived as injustice to his home state Anambra. So he's really ex um, he was really, really proud to name this international airport after China Achebe. And I, I think more of this needs to be done, especially from the southeastern part. When I entered APC yesterday, I, was, I, you know, I always feel this sense of pride anytime mm -hmm. I enter APC. Like, you know, this, this is not just NSO, it's a correct plane. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so this kind of thing. We need to project Ma uh, our own. Place, but they delayed us like the, like Three five hours, oh. but even with that delay, even other airplanes did delay. Yeah, but this one, you know, the delay. even in the other day, but they delay. Yeah, but this one, I, you just felt I didn't really care. Mm. I was like, hey, hey. you were being nah, picked. Yeah, like, nah, 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 delay nah, assess is okay. Yes, you know, we'll go. Now nah, assess it. We'll be all right. Stress us all right, moving on now to Vanguard. FG's meeting with NLC TUC ends in deadlock. I think this is kind of late. The impeachment at Redolu shops for a new. Deputy Governor, Boa reduces cement price to 3500 per bag. Live well, be happy, death calls us daily. Uh, U.S. court orders CSO, that's Chicago State University, to release Nimbus academic records to Atiku. Nigeria 63, governors can't others preach peace, say countries' challenges surmountable. Wicked moves against Okada mm -hmm. operations, open grazing in Abuja. Okay, which story? I have the impeachment story. So, um... I like the way this was taken. Um, they said that the Ondo State Governor, Ruti Miyakindulu, started shopping for a new deputy governor following the impeachment saga wow. concerning his um, deputy, Iyayi <coughs> Datiwa. And the report has four uh, personalities from the same region where Iyayi Datiwa, the state, uh, Ondo State oil producing areas, they said they have the, um, the former Ondo State oil producing areas development commission, Osopadek chairman, Benga Edema, uh, another party chieftain, Nimbe Tawoshi, uh, the deputy speaker in the State House of Assembly, Abayomi Akinruton, and the special advisor to the governor on education, Dr. Omi Ilawoli, as candidates that he's also looking at. Then the report goes and says that the governor did not want an impeachment of his deputy. He, he has prevailed on the, states, uh, the speaker of the State House of Assembly to, to drop or halt the impeachment process, but they have insisted on going on. And when he too read the allegations against his deputy, he had to drop hands and start to fish for a replacement. 
Mm. So um, Nigeria marked 63 years independence yesterday, and state governors, religious organizations, some prominent citizens have all expressed optimism that the challenges facing the country are surmountable. So they had their separate Independence Day speeches, and they expressed hope that with the right government policies and cooperation of every citizen, the problems facing the country will be a thing of the past in no distant time. So I want to highlight a few things uh, some of them said. So um, um, the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, in his speech, uh, called on the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Allocation Commission, RAMFAC, to review the current revenue allocation formula in favor of the states. A condition, he said, would determine what salary the states can afford to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal. Uh, Yobe State Governor Mai Buni, also in his speech, said Nigerians need to play a role in building a united, strong, and prosperous, a prosperous nation. Um, Akero Dolu, that's um, um, Governor Rutimi Akero Dolu also yesterday called on all Nigerians to unite with the country's leadership in the task of rebuilding the nation towards peace, progress, and development. We had a few people who did not agree with the government, opposition parties and the like. So the Christian Association of Nigeria, uh, in their message, said the government should not overlook the profound challenges confronting the nation. I think PDP also made a statement, uh, so they dismissed the speech saying mm. it was bereft of ideas and all of that. So we have uh, for and against people yeah. who are rooting for the government, people who are also condemning right. what they've seen so far. Yeah. So, um, I was going to say Governor Vicky, <laughs> but the FCT has. Um, the Minister of FCT in this week, while on the tour with journalists on, um, on the various areas within FCT, um, was talking about the possibility of cross, the crushing motorcycles impounded in restricted areas. I was saying that they're also going to have to, at some point, enforce the ban on the open cattle grazing. But specifically told the journalists that, listen, don't go and, um, don't go and um, um, relay the news in a way to cause problems. That we are still consulting. According to him, we did not take firm decisions because we are not, we have not been able to provide buses as alternative. Uh, he said that um, the government also would um, talk to the um, bike owners to see how to provide alternatives for them. Also, say for the open grazing, we are not saying we will stop open grazing in Abuja, but just you know, they are not saying they will stop grazing in Abuja. But they say that they will have to discuss, have a meeting with the cattle people. According to him, we will sit down with the cattle people. Somewhere else? Yes, you have to give them alternative. They have to be somewhere else? Yes, you have to give them alternative. Very, very difficult situation. <laughs> anyway, let's see how many minutes we have. We don't have any more minutes. Let's just take the headline in the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story we've not taken. Delta tanker explosion. FRC confirms eight deaths, eight buses, five trailers, two tanker but Customs arrest shipping agents who plan to ex export elephant ivories, really. Pangolin skills and others. Lagos government seals eight eateries, malls for environmental infractions. <coughs> Excuse me. AGF denies signing 50 billion RP back in with Inifili. Any story jumping at you? Yeah, the eight eateries that were you know, sealed uh, across the lake this one, yes. So this were sealed by the Lagos state government for various environmental infractions. And some of the outlets, they said, contravened the state's sanitation laws. And um, they sealed them off. They mentioned their names, Lennox Mall, The Place, Brazos Place, Admiralty Mall, on the developed... popular land. places, though. Yeah, Sea Smart Supermarket, Frisia Food Restaurant, Nectar Beauty Hub, Sailor Lounge, and a lot of them. And they said <coughs> they need to, um, you know, prevent... Uh, that, that these people are actually causing the um, some of the flooding that happens in that area. So yeah. some of them were built on, you know, the uh, pipelines. Are supposed, yes, drainages, the drainage lines, and so they are trying as much as possible to see how they can, you know clear the blockages and some of them too are also not you know keeping to sanitation they are blocking the drainages with their wastage and all of that so let's see how that works okay that is all we can take on front page review when we come back more to the hot topic of today stay with us we'll be right back stay tuned your view will be right hmm. so have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who want women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the black table.
doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anikula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, yeah, today, ginger me, yeah, ginger today me. we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I didn't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah, wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, said 75. 75. I couldn't. wasn't even born to 75. Damn. So, will I drink out? Ah, you can drink out. Oh. Take, take, take. Make a, I go make a help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. Eh, which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Light in in no. Nepa. Nepa Road. Ha! <laughs> Nepa Road. Nepa Road. In Avelkuta. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah hey, omi omo fella, omi omo anikula kpokuti. Ono pe kini kekele. It's by all this one. It's not by all this one. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. Fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. It's not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So like, if I had a very, very interesting... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you wouldn't want to work with who? No There's no judgment. No, uh, and I respect, oh, don't judge you I respect but we won't this judge certain you. type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their resentment on them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. My just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month, and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. But when it comes to like divorced people, I cannot work with a divorcee. I can't see myself doing that. If I find out, if you can hide this one, but if I find out, when they are nice divorcees, I would just. What be, if they are nice? Okay, now it depends. If you are nice, cool. But if you are the type that you don't know how to keep your anger to yourself, you always you always pour it on somebody. Well, I'll just drop my resignation letter, no matter the amount you're paying me. So you're <laughs> more passive aggressive people. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. Oh, definitely. And I cannot work with stingy people. Ah, see this one. Because you cannot be passing me in the morning afternoon. I can say, oh, hi, ah, yeah, I'm okay. Oh, yeah, take 100 naira. Take 10k. Take 15 <laughs> hey, don't, You don't have to be my sugar daddy or sugar mommy. What, what, see, the way you treat others is the way they will treat you outside. Yeah. And if you cannot treat your workers well, they are not a good boss. If you cannot be dashing me small, small thing or giving me donuts when I'm, when I'm working, you are not a good boss. <laughs> Shall be asked. <laughs> Not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So like if I had a very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you wouldn't want to work with who? No There's no judgment. No, uh, and I respect, oh, judge you I respect but we won't this judge certain you. type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work 
and then they pour all their resentment on them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. Mom just come out with your payment. Residents speech yesterday on October 1st on the 63rd anniversary of our nation um, is a hot topic for today because all Nigerians are talking about it. How did the speech make you feel? What are your thoughts about um, the points he made, this conversation with NLC, uh, the updates we have this morning? Um, he's talked about hope, about um, unity, about the fact that our unity is non-negotiable, uh, reminding us that um, uh, we have our forefathers, who our founding fathers and founding mothers have done have sacrificed um, ultimately to bring us where we are today and that we must not sacrifice our unity. And he also said, said that we should celeb celebrate our diversity. What are your general thoughts on the president's speech? We'd like to hear Nigerians' views. Please call us on the numbers on your screen, 81 7641 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. And also messages on YouTube. We'll be happy to hear your thoughts on it. Um, ladies, let me come to you. I mean, everybody was kind of talking about the speech. We all woke up very early, 7 a.m. My phone was ready, you know, to see, um, to hear the president. And uh, what are your thoughts first? Um, he looked rather tired. His, well, his countenance was, it seemed like it was quite stressful. Because yes. usually we've seen him a little better than that, you know. Oh, but he was a bit I like... I believe he's been traveling a lot. A lot. He just came back <coughs> from the UN General Assembly and... That was a lot of work yes. talking to presidents. He went to India before that. Yes, he's not rested. Went to uh, uh, yeah, UAE, to, yes. then then went back to the US. Yes, so yes, the UN General Assembly, and then he just got back. I felt I was saying to my husband, "This man is seriously jet lagged. He needs to take a break, rest, and you know to recover." But he had to do the Independence Day uh, event itself, yes. so he had to show up. And for me. Out of all everything he said, it was for a subsidy that was out of focus. <laughs> because my neighbors will not let me breathe. They come and say, ah, this government we voted for. This is how we planned it and a lot of things. And I kept explaining that these are things that preceded his administration. Yes. Yes. The decisions, the inactions, the actions and inactions of the preceding. And I also bring in CNG buses to ensure that they mitigate you know, the cost of transportation. And those are the major issues that we're looking at. Yeah. All right, let me come to that your, alternative thing. Well, yeah, yes. What are your own general thoughts on... Yes, yeah, so, so the, the speech was um, full for me. So it was holistic. It covered all the aspects that Nigerians mm -hmm. have been waiting to hear what the president had to say. And, you know, this is also an opportunity to say that no matter how good the policy is, it needs time mm -hmm. for us to see the effect, the positive effect of that policy. And if we keep fighting trying to fight the policy. We will not even wait to see where it will lead us to at the end of the day. But there was uh, so something it took. I was, when you were waiting for fuel subsidy, mm -hmm. me, I was waiting for the palliatives, you know, because I wanted to hear how he would handle or how he would speak about what he's going to do concerning the pains Nigerians are going through. Mm -hmm. Things are very costly at the moment. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. For me to be driving past and I will see plantain and remove my face, yeah. is that serious? You know, but he talked about the palliatives if you talked about the uh, 25,000, which he has agreed is now 35,000 that they are going to be increasing for workers all across board. So it's not just low-income workers now, but everyone who is working would have a form of increment. And also the cash um, uh, they wanted to start sending to the family. Though we don't know when this is going to start, but we also mentioned it is still in the pipeline. Just to find ways to see how you know all these um, uh, people can you know cushion the effects of what is happening right now. And I felt like okay, he understands what we are going through but we need to see the action yeah we need to see it so you understand you know what you're going to do please can you give us a time frame when are we starting when are we releasing this and all of that that would give nigerians a form of hope then insecurity as well maybe you can go so let me quickly add to what you yeah. said on palliative so he mentioned that they will extend the um uh, additional f um, the safe social safety net to additional 15 million homes okay. and that's as, apart from that, they're also looking at um, investment funding for enterprises to increase, to boost employment and boost urban incomes. Mm. People are looking at the 35,000 that the rich with labor as affecting only civil servants. So pe some people are saying, what about me? I remember my neighbor yesterday when I was just in a Yala Olu show saying, how do I benefit? So I, I explained to her that, you know, they're looking at boosting employment. Very soon, we'll see more people in the employment net that looking at funding of companies if we continue to, you know, to, to be hopeful, yeah. you know, we'll be able to benefit from, the, you know, the urban incomes and all of those uh, interventions that we you know, And then the 15 million vulnerable homes. 
I hope that the data with the uh, with uh, better Edo's ministry is it's accurate. The yeah. Mm. You know, I don't. I saw her video yesterday at uh, Makoko. I'm hoping that beyond Makoko, there are people who are yeah. in the other areas that mm. you think are eyebrow. The when creeps. you go in within, you see the yes. state of living. Mm. I hope yeah. that they extend to that. You know, yesterday I was I came back and I had to take a taxi, and the taxi driver. I mean, they seem to be in a sort of independence celebration. So I was just having a conversation with him. I said, Ah. How is the country treating you guys? Ah, madam, no is you. Mm. You know that um, things are really, really tough. I said, well, and I was asking, how do you, what do you think of the president's speech? That was my question. He said, ah, eh, he said we should be patient. No, he said we, should be, we have to be patient because ah, I don't even know. I said, but um, how, how, how are you with money? He said, it's not easy. That mm. even buying food from the family is extremely difficult. Yes, so he yes. said that. And I said, but they said they're giving palliatives. Mm. He said, ah, <clears throat> that palliative matter. But he was, he's, he's a party member. And he was, he was supposed to distribute 150, 160, 160 bags mm. to his community, which he took to Ekpe. And he gave some 25, 45, he, he spread it out. And when he now finally delivered, he realized that it was 5 kg of rice. Now, what can 5 kg of rice do for his family? Even he himself, in one, two days, they are done with mm -hmm. his kids. So he understands that they are trying to provide palliatives, but it's really not enough. So that's why I'm, I'm linking it to the 25,000 naira. The fact that giving somebody the money, 35,000 naira actually, mm -hmm. will, people, will probably go further mm -hmm. than just giving them um, 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 palliatives of rice or beans. For everyone, the government has started doing. Yeah. There's at least 15 family members, Absolutely. Uh, members that you'd reach. Yeah. So where, where, if we look at it as only one person getting it, what about you know, being able yes. to meet you know, the needs of your dependents? Yeah. Hmm. Also, they did not do that um, 35,000 for workers alone. There are other programs that would eventually balance things out. One thing I am looking out for, seriously, because I saw some states um, in the north, I'm trying to remember the state, already having the electric, electric buses. They, in, they uh, contracted Innocent to provide electric buses, wow. and the buses were already operating. So if other states continue to emulate it, because we're looking at the federal government, nobody's yeah. shouting what the state government the government's are doing. I was explaining to my neighbor again that, you know, the state government in Lagos State have already put subsidy that now if you're in the BRT buses, you don't pay the full price. And she was mm -hmm. like, where do I? It's okay that I'm carrying me to Korum now. And they, they are still looking at it like, but eventually it will trickle down. Yes. Eventually, it's not an immediate thing, but it will trickle down. I'm just hoping that you know, they, they, people would like to see. Mm -hmm. So that person gave some people 5 kg, but some people did not receive that 5 kg. Oh, yeah. So what is important is that we have our data correct. Okay. So that when somebody receives, you know that at least you, the government has reached you. The possibility of government reaching most people is what is vague. Yeah. Let me take this call from a Kenet um, from Abuja. Thanks for calling Ekene. Thanks for your, your live. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Good morning, all. Good morning. Yeah, I just want to talk about one or two things um, from what I got um, from the president's speech. You see, he said a whole lot of things, but what I want to point out here is that one, the inflationary trend will continue to increase if we don't have a system of production. Two. The president, um, we, are, we understand he extended the hand of fellowship to state governors as regards palliatives. You see, in the past, we saw what happened with those palliatives that was extended to state governors. Most of them started, they didn't use it for the purpose for which um, it has been given. So now, we want the president to put a stake concerning this palliative because this. What's a what? Put a stake. Stake. So we didn't get that didn't last get that. part. I didn't get it. Let me come to you. And, um, yes, so while Nima was talking, my housekeeper just sent me a list of what I need to buy. <laughs> <laughs> and did somebody who said, when I was leaving this money, eh, mommy, just help us get bread. I said, okay, is that all? Okay, add tomatoes. Is that all? Add onions. I said, okay, write what we need. I have over 20 something things. I don't want to list it. You know, it's, it's really scary. And I, I feel, uh, especially for those people who are not even making up to minimum wage, you know, sometimes you, you are looking at your level and you are thinking this suffering is too much. But what about those people who are not even making yeah. up to? But I wanted to talk about uh, security. And um, the president said they are protecting lives of the people and their property remains the highest priority of his administration. And he's, you know, trying to get inter-service collaboration and intelligence sharing to be enhanced, you know. They have taxed the service chiefs with vital responsibility of rebuilding the capacities of our security service. Uh, though we don't need the details of the security, but can we know exactly what is being done? Do we have like um, data on how many 
uh, security personnel that will be employed. We, we've been talking about the fact that we don't have enough uh, yes. police of personnel. Can, can we know if there's recruitment? In, is there any form of recruitment happening to the example? We cannot be over 200 million people and we just have 100 thousands of yeah. you know police personnel who don't have enough to protect us and i know there was a time they announced that all the police um following the vip should be you know recalled, recalled. is that working do we have data to show that they have actually been recalled and they are no longer have we followed up so we need some form of details on what the steps are and i know that it may not be his job to break it down on a day like this because he has mm. a lineup of things to do but afterwards can we have a place where we go to and get these details so that nigerians can see that they are working we're seeing the progress we're seeing the action we're seeing the, the to do the how everything is listed there can we have that so that we find that we're, we're able to hold governments more accountable to say you promise you're going to be employing so so and so into the police system after a few months you have not done anything what's happening it will be better for us let me take this call from Ola Olua it's calling from Suru Lewe. thanks for calling Ola Olua yeah, good morning good morning yeah I I can appreciate people analyzing the problem of Nigeria this way or that way by want to go to sure. There is a problem with Nigeria that we have not looked into. We have not involved God. We have been fighting and making reference to founding fathers. We are not making reference to God. To God. We are not making references to God. Even where God has appeared in our uh, national anthem is in the second standard. And it's not even a prayer. It's not a prayer. It's just like the commanding of the God of creation. And people hardly even seen that second standard. Look at America, for God's sake. That confession is there. In God we trust. Even though people think that America is worse for crime and even that. But look at it. God is endowing them with it simply because of that confession. And the prayer on the lips of every American says, God bless America. God can, because of that, you confessing him, decide to, you know, just, just spoil you with all necessary that we do. So we are not, our leaders are not, are not displaying God in the mouth of our leaders. All right, thank you very much, Alalu. I know the second stanza of our, our national anthem mm. is actually a prayer. It's true, but, because yeah. we silent it a lot. Yeah, but yeah. now, recently, we've been actually projecting it a lot at, at events. But let me, let me touch on the part of unity, because I think that what struck me the most from the president's speech because I think more than ever we need a reminder of how important it is for us to stay together mm -hmm. and when you're continually hearing from our president reminding Nigerians I think it's rather crucial mm -hmm. so there's something he said that struck me he said we are a broad and dynamic blend of ethnic groups religions traditions and cultures yet our bonds are intangible yet strong invisible yet universal we are joined by common thirst for peace and progress, by the common dream of prosperity and harmony, and by the unifying ideas of tolerance and justice. The president um, also said that Nigeria's unity is non-negotiable. He said, forging a diverse and populous nation such as Nigeria has been a task of significance, blessing, but also serial challenges. Mm. Some people have said that uh, the Nigeria will break apart but they'd be mistaken. So I think that it's important when, when we have a president reminding us about diversity and the fact that we're in, we're in times where everybody wants, an, wants to be seen and heard. You know, back then it was just two or three, okay, Ndebo, the Yoruba, and, no, and, 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 and Hausa. But now every single tribe wants to be heard. Every single tribe wants to be represented. The, the education is exposure, there's enlightenment. We all want to be part of this whole. And I think it's important for us to see the value in that. So when our president reiterates this in his speeches, I've, still, I've observed that in almost all these speeches, he constantly reminds us, and I think we need to highlight it more, on how we must see ourselves as one Nigeria, mm -hmm. and we must see ourselves as part of a whole. He keeps saying, and he keeps repeating the fact that we are from different rooms in the same building, in the same house. We are all in different rooms. We are all in the same house. So, which I think is something that we need to continually remind Nigerians of, and I thought that was really important to highlight. Mm, President also talked about, you know, because one of the things that have made prices go up is the cost of diesel. Mm -hmm. In the cost of production, everybody has to deal with diesel because we've not gotten power right. And, you know, he mentioned that, you know, there will be a tax waiver for six months <coughs> of VAT for diesel. 
mm. going forward. Some people have criticized this as ah, just six months. Even the thirty-five thousand they have criticized that is just a six month. Yeah. We are looking at you know adjusting to yes. a new reality. Yeah. And somebody is giving us a buffer, and we are criticizing that buffer. We are saying when well, we did not have anything, we criticized. Mm. Now that we are looking, you know, it is not like there's money somewhere that you have to bring. Do we want the loans to continue to grow? Yeah. We are dealing with yes. unpaid loans. We are de dealing with, uh, you know, loan servicing, interest servicing, debt services, and all of those big, big names that I cannot, you know, for the economists, I don't know how to pronounce these things. Mm. But, you know, he's looked, looked at, you know, a period of time that would help us adjust into our yeah. new reality. If, for instance, at this time, production, cost of diesel, you know, what he can take off as we're taking off. We said it here in the last administration that, you know, remove the taxes from diesel. Yeah. Let the production which be, he has be done. easy, which he has done now. So, and he has done it for a period of time to help the companies adjust. And very soon, production will take off. Not, not that they will shut down. But seeing businesses close up, shut down because of cost yeah. of, uh, you know, running businesses. And and, we'll, you know, let me take this, Fee Baba, Mr. Fee Baba from Suleja. Thanks for calling. Fee Baba. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I want to commend you ladies for doing a wonderful job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, first, I really want Nigerians out there that please, this situation we are at the moment, we are not supposed to be putting blame. Because the problem we are facing in this country at the moment, whoever God brought into power, we always complain. We always complain. The situation we are at the moment now, what we need is prayer. Let us sit down. Princess. Let us pray for, for these leaders so that God will guide them and lead them in the right way. Because when we continue complaining, they are doing this, they are doing that, God will continue increasing the problem we are having ah. in this country. <laughs> okay. He says God that we agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I see, baby, yes. What I was going to add to what Nima said is fact that Six months. I think I, I would think Nigerians should say, okay, let's let's give this president this six months. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, we have the CNG conversion point at the filling stations. We need to review that. How many buses have been converted? How many of the transportation buses? How many more of the manufacturers have received a billion? I remember he said he had promised in the previous speech that 75 will get 1 billion naira to manufacture because we need to increase our exporting and, and manufacturing um, and production um, 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 sector. So these are the things we need to look forward to in the next six months because as he's giving this cushion effect, those other ripple effects on these SMEs, mm. the small medium scale companies, they need that buffer that he has promised in his last previous speech. No, I, I understand why uh, Nigerians will question six yeah. months because we know in this country when things go up, they don't come down. Mm. And everybody's trying to say, okay, how do I survive? We don't, we don't have like a clear a clear idea of when the sufferings will stop. We don't have that clear idea. We're all guessing and stipulating, okay, maybe a few months, a few years. We don't know how long it's going to take. And so when people say, ah, six months is too small, people are already foreseeing maybe things will really not come down. So why do I want to just take this for six months and survive in this way and then it stops after six months and I'm back to square one. Mm. So everybody's just trying to see how they can survive on their own. That's why I'm saying that the government needs to spell out everything it wants to do and give us a bit of a time frame. I know they are not gods. They will not see the ripple effect at the end of the day. But give that hope means that we have the number of, like, when you're setting a goal, you have when you want to achieve that goal. So you can set this goal and say, in six months' time, I want to be here. So if you give us in six months' time, we will be here. These and these and these are some of the things. And that's why we need experts to do the calculations for us. These are some of the things you now see that will mean that we have achieved this goal. When you give that to Nigerians, I say, okay, for us to get to that six months, I'm going to give you this to cushion the effect for that time frame it will be accepted more than just saying we we'll just do this for six months and leave you guys hanging and everybody's wondering what if after six months we don't get the desired results well, you know it's quite no, interesting it's that we always feel that the president is like this for that christmas we're waiting for that's what we're give us a gift. Yeah, that's what this we let us we're waiting for forgetting that even we as a people I, I believe that statement was confusing. Confusing. our national let me, let me go let me go on a quick because we come back we continue this national conversation national stay with us very right back ladies and gentlemen make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good, I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, I mean. Yeah. It was great. Okay. 
thank you. We, we, thank we try you. like that. Thank you, thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Glitch <laughs> my no. <laughs> she you didn't whine me. me. You whine me no. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym means. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, it's supposed to be, yeah. I just said, let me give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. Sony. Drink! Ah, I'm not there, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. You did not, you, you not say final answer. It's final answer. You did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you. Yeah, Michael. How many, how many cameras do they have? Michael. I went to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Michael, no. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, I said 75. 75. I couldn't. Fellas wasn't even born till 75. Damn. So, will I drink out? Eh? You go drink out. Oh. Take, take, take. Make a, I go make a help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. I eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing the president's speech. And uh, before the break, we're talking about um, how people felt that the speech, when, when the president speaks, it's supposed to be this Santa Claus or Father Christmas coming to just want to give us something. And forgetting the role that we play, I was, I, was, I was responding to you saying, I remember when we had a guest last week, um, Mr. Bakari, who was saying the real value of Naira is supposed to be between, between 650 to 700. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that we Nigerians, I always go, the middle class who have small Naira, in their accounts have mopped up the dollars because they want to change all the naira to dollars. We are part of the person. so because of that, it got a spike. And now we say, oh, dollar is one the naira is dollar is the one thousand naira. Why? Because the real value well, that we've seen based on um, the real indices shouldn't have come, come past seven hundred. But many people started converting all their naira because they don't want to lose the value. Mm -hmm. So we also are part of the problem, whether we like to believe it or not. So, so the truth is that as Nigerians. What else, how do we, how should we see the president's speech and what can we, how do we um, see our own role in being part of the solution? No, that's not a fair assessment to say Nigerians quickly mopped up the little naira that they have. We have uh, people who are in places of leadership who will not use what we have here, who would prefer to 
convert, get the forex and do medical tourism outside. They will do education outside. They do everything outside. We're not looking at this. Okay, now. Hey, now, so, oh, yes. But that's not what you mentioned. You mentioned just the middle class people who have a few, a few naira in their accounts. Part of the problem. Mopping up. But I don't even yeah, think that is the problem. The problem. So they are not able to mop if there if there were policies, mm. right policies preventing that people would always take advantage of the loopholes the government presents. Doesn't make so it every, no, no, no. It doesn't make it right. But the government has a responsibility to block those loopholes. That's why your government. That's why in a place of leadership, everybody cannot be a leader. So if you are a leader, when you do things right, people will not have an avenue to do things wrong. You do your job. Everybody does their job. But what I'm saying, in essence, is we need to um, we need to open a conversation to say. Um, the, the gift we think they are come, we are expecting government to give us is not a gift, it's ours. It belongs to us. It belongs to the nation. The, the revenue that we get, the tax, everything belongs to the nation. So if you see that your people are suffering and you decide, I want to do this and that to sort of help them, it's not a gift you are giving to anybody. You're not giving us a gift. It belongs I, to the nation. I, 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 I beg to disagree because we, if we look at it as gifts, you know, this entitled mindset of Nigerians is why we're here. Nigerians don't want to live within means. Nigerians want to mop it yeah. up, come out your dollar to the dollar and save it. So you have more money when you need to change it yes. to, to do the, you know, I mean, what exactly are our needs? What exactly are our needs? If government is providing, uh, you know, cheaper transport by electric buses and CNG buses, that's, those are our needs. Move around, do your daily businesses. But the excess that you make you bigger, that's what you're looking at. The uh, uh, palliative government is giving out to 15 million households. How much are our needs, basic needs? You know, Nigerians are no longer waiting for those things and saying, if you say government should give you this thing as a national cake, yeah. for which source? Exactly. Based on which petrol that we're selling? Let's you know, we, have, we, we must face the realities that we have on ground for us to begin to talk yeah. this talk. I believe that government is presently looking at tax reforms. They're looking to, uh, you know, expand ca uh, tax nets. They're giving uh, some form of palliative to producers. They're giving to our manufacturers. They're giving, you know, whatever they are doing is going to help us adjust in six months. Mm. Whatever the inabilities, inadequacies of the CNG buses should be done and done with. They say they're bringing the conversion kits. By in six months, we should be seeing the reality of the yes. buses everywhere. I traveled to Ghana 10 years ago. Mm. 10 years ago. And they were already using CNG buses and converting the buses. All right. Let me bring in our guest. Um, he is the former um, executive vice chairman of the presidential tax team on restoration of sanity to the Lagos Port Access Rose, Dr. Kayo Diokoifa. Welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. to have good you good. with us. You've been hearing and listening to um, our conversation concerning the president's speech. Uh, let me start with your own general review of his speech, and then we'll discuss the other angles. Go ahead, please. Uh, okay, uh, uh, good morning, and uh, let me say congratulations to Nigerians. Yeah. At least uh, in recent time, we are privileged to have a presidential uh, 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 independent speech that speaks to everybody. This speech is just about 30 paragraphs, mm -hmm. was well crafted and very honest. The president was honest in that speech. He laid bare on Nigerians the state of the nation. What will have required about 30 page of write-up, he made it in 30 paragraphs. Uh, to begin, he acknowledged the founding fathers of this country, at least for us all to appreciate. And for those who don't understand history, to understand the fact that we started somewhere. He went through what we all describe as a diversity and it, it, it relates how this actually should be a strength. Uh, then he went further to acknowledge that there are issues, especially arising from some of the decisions the presidency has taken. That is being honest and sincere. And he, he explained why it has to be that way and pleaded with Nigerians to bear with him. He used some analogies that are scriptural, but he avoided being labeled as talking from any part of the religious sector. When he alluded to the issue of building the foundation on the mall, rather, he would rather do what is what at the future. He went further, he spoke to the National Assembly, he spoke about the legislature, he also spoke to the judiciary. He commended them for what 
as they have been doing to this government. He also addressed the issue of the civil societies and, and, and the media combined. So what you have in this speech is the speech that talks to the poorest of the poor, to the middle class, to the rich Nigerians, to the industrialists, and to everybody. He highlighted some of the decisions he has taken, which Nigerians may think are somehow are, are painful. He acknowledged it and said he's not surprised that they are painful. But what he's sure of is that it's a matter of time, that this is the path we ought to have taken, this is the path we should take, and he's ready to take that path because he's sure of the outcome. He highlighted some of the uh, way forward on this reform. And, and about five or six of them, he talks about the fiscal and monetary policy to fight inflation. This is critical. Nigerians are complaining of economic action, the, the rising cost of the dollar to the Naira, and uh, the, the impact of first subsidy removal. You remember the phrase soft subsidy is gone. Mm. He acknowledged he made those statements out of the new for Nigeria. And he, he alerted what he would do. Fiscal monetary policy reform. He talked about savings for the future, today and for the future. He talked about directive to state government to roll out palliative. He talked about the, uh, uh, the, the social net being increased almost by 100%, from 8 million to 15 million. Right. And he also alluded to the fact that the disbursement will start sometimes in the. Uh, Dr. Poifa, let me get you a few questions. Dr. Poifa. Major issue affecting us, that is the energy sector. Where the cost of transportation arising from the subsidy removal is an issue. He talked about the CNG buses. Yeah. And he mentioned that these buses should have been on the road, therefore, procurement process. So he's a man of law. He acknowledges the difficulty and what the government is going through. So this is what right. leaders ought to expose okay. to their followers. I'm doing right. my best. I'm trying my best, but I have challenges. These are my challenges, but I don't see them as a problem. I see them as opportunity to move. He has done that. Right. And he went down, the talk about these... Uh, All right, let me get a few questions in for you. Not, which, uh, 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 what do you call it, minimum wage matter. But that everybody will get 25,000, which has now been clarified to be 35,000. Right. And if to some people, 100, to some it is 50% of their going to some it is 20. My own calculation, right. apart from the permanent secretaries and those on level, 17. This is a minimum of 20% uh, dash for the next six months. And at least this will take us before the new minimum wage. All right. Of, uh, from what we also see from this speech, this speech actually addressed a lot of issues being raised by labor. So this let's, is let's, one well, I like to say, uh, there's some critics. Everything. Technologies is own uh, 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 issues and it shows clear sincerity right. of purpose. Okay. Dr. Poifa, so uh, um, I heard you I would like you to, you know, to maybe dispel the distrust some Nigerians have in the palliatives going around. So, you know, the president had promised to reach out to certain businesses, about 75 of them with a billion naira grant to assist those businesses. He's also talked about reaching 15 million households. Nigerians, because of distrust, have, just, have um, criticized to say that this is just big boy, sharing money, largest for the big boys, you know, or po political support. What do you say to, to this? Yeah, thank you very much. What I did not mention earlier was to say that he also talked about the social redistribution of wealth. He said, whether we like it or not, we are not the same. Mm. Some who got those palliatives will be happy. Those who don't get it will not be happy. The distrust in the social register, I'm going to put it more on the media because we need to manage the situation. There is no way to do a social register in a country that is still grappling with social identity and we think it's going to be perfect. People will continue to complain as long as we don't implement the policies the way it is meant to be implemented. I believe most of the policy, most of the complaints on the policies are coming from the way it is being implemented. I'm not, I'm not trying to speak for the president or a portion of blame. I think you should put those blames on the state governments and the local governments. Who have the responsibility to do that part? The responsibility of the president and the presidency at the center is to put down the policy. We have five billion naira. We are releasing two billion naira from the infrastructure fund. In the meantime, you have to go to your states. You have to go to the local government, get the people, find the modality to do so. We should address the state governments and the local governments on this. And that is where we have 
different tiers of government and different responsibility. I, we have heard this, and it's, it's terrible. The way the palliative is being managed, I mean, the food aspect of the palliative is not that perfect in many states. Some states have gone through it. People have mentioned Borono State. We have a perfect, uh, of, not a perfect, a near a perfect, something reasonable way of doing it. So we need to appeal to the state governments and the local governments uh, chairman. They need to do the right thing. They right. must do the palliative in such a way that our people are treated. We don't need to give palliative to me. I can survive. But people like us should be able to also support where we can support. The palliative should go to people who need it. People who should be given and should be given to them in a dignified manner. And right. it should not also be done in a way that it should also affect uh, the cost of foods in the market. I think on that area, Nigerians are... And the president addressed it. He All mentioned right. that he's aware of the issues. And he also informed that the states are directed or have been mandated or have taken up the responsibility to handle this. I think that should be directed uh, at the state governments. And right. I'm joining other Nigerians. And I also want to also appeal to the media on this social register thing. Look, I was involved in some of the trader money uh, uh, comp computation. I was partly asked to help with the uh, transfer sector. And I told the presidency, it doesn't make sense. If you are going to give people in the transport sector 10,000 naira, but six months after, we were approached again, and we were able to get 35,000 genuine transport operators in Abuja, federal capital territory. We couldn't right. get one of them because quick of break. Uh, so many controversies and that of Kano. All right, I need to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, what the critics are saying concerning the uh, president's speech. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the grand comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first. Woo! OJ right here, seven of seven, like you already know. Benga right here, seven of seven, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So. Okay. So, now one chance for time. My first question. Do you remember the names of the winners of that edition of StarQuest? Of course I do. Why uh, do you? And I, and, I, and, I, and I hate myself for this. Because I have this question for you. Final question. No. Where, where outside Nigeria and what year? I think you're the only one that can be wicked. I am thinking because I know back in the day. Don't think, oh, don't think. Answer my question quick, quick. You are thinking too much. I don't like it. The UK. Final answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said, God, God, please. Let me to perform outside Nigeria. Wait, 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 wait. And wait, wait, God wait. gave me a trip, a show in Ghana. <laughs> Drink, my friend, drink, 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 drink. I know, I don't, I don't overthink this thing. See where I can yes, you overthink him. I would say you should catch one. Uh, let's catch one. <laughs> Where are we? No, that's not catch one. That's, that's good. That's, that's, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Ike Chuku, Sunday, Okonkwo, aka Cross. <laughs> Are your intro without you? Know? Wow. So there's a name that thing that's. I'm just drinking because you said I should drink. There's no particular answer. <laughs> I think it's only that can be wicked. What's the answer? Sort of huge. Eh? Yeah. They claim you did, but you said it just happened. That and it's called what again? Sort of huge. Such a huge. S U B T E R F U. So you look me finish from head to toe. You look at a person who go no way to be called hustle, such a such 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 The nude wasn't like a game plan. Or... I promise you, it was be actually a mistake.
to stay with us. We still have Dr. Okpaifa here with us. Dr. Okpaifa, one of uh, many of the president's critics have said that um, his speech was bereft of substance or ideas or any just more promises. You know that he didn't really give anything tangible, besides obviously of the thirty-five thousand naira for um, the uh, for the um, for for labor. But what are your thoughts on those who said that it was just a bunch of promises? We don't even know how um, how how far they're going to go in actually delivering on these promises he's made. I, I didn't get you right. Some of his critics have said the speech was bereft of substance and um, were mostly promises. And there were no indications of when these promises would actually materialize. So what are your views on that? Okay, uh, 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 that is not surprising. Uh, critics will always find something to say. Mm -hmm. The important thing is, does the speech speaks to Nigerians and majority of Nigerians? Yes. A, a 30 paragraph speech. Yes cannot be expected to delve into the nitty-gritty of how it be done. Immediately after the speech, we, we, we are aware the Labour met with some uh, people in the presidency and some clarifications were also made yesterday. And that is what we happened. After the speech, the various uh, policy uh, implementers will spring into action. And we have just been informed that the, uh, 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 the, the, the the wage augmentation is going to everybody. Now it is 35,000 naira. That is left for the uh, civil, uh, the, the, the bureaucrats to, 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 to perfect. It's not the job of the president's speech to start explaining. So I think they are just doing the job they are expected to be critics. Okay. Are expected to criticize. All right. And, and, and that is also work. And it's also another way for the presidency too to know that people are listening and. and and they are interested in more details. So I am not surprised. Okay. I think uh, that is expected. But for right. me, I think that speech is directed to all Nigerians, okay. and including those who live in the presidency or not. Right. Okay. Okay. Would it be um, also um, you know, good to say that the speech should have had added a bit of timelines to the implementation? Because Nigerians are worried that we have some of these good things that the president wants to do to solve the issues we have in the country, but there are no timelines. How long do we tighten this belt? When are we going to get this hope? When is it going to materialize? Should that have been added in some of the things that he, the, the government is planning to do for Nigerians? I think uh, that's another beauty of the speech, that Nigerians are asking for timeline. That means they love the speech, they accepted the speech, and they expected results. And they're asking the presidency now what at the time that that is going to come by the bureaucrats who are expected to carry out. The, the president mentioned in the speech that uh, um, 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 there are some reforms that are going on. He also explained the speech that he has set up a lot of committees. He mentioned the tax reform committee without mentioning the PCNG initiative committee. He mentioned the PCNG issue. He mentioned the social uh, safety net. That is under the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. So those are the people that will come forward and provide timeline if necessary okay. and if available. Then what is important is that the speech is uh, 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 eliciting comments and that is what a speech is expected to right. be. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Kweka. Let me let you go at this point. Appreciate your inputs this morning. Um, I know that we wanted to say a few more things on, on, on the speech because I know Nigerians are still discussing it. Uh, before the break, at some point, we were talking about um, middle class. You always accusing you of accusing yes, middle class. Yes, middle class. But I think one of the things I'd like to highlight before I leave is the fact that well, to, 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 to further explain to you why I always blame the middle class. When, uh, when the president recently allegedly got uh, uh, the Dubai ban, lifted that they, they, they allegedly removed the restriction of Dubai. We saw on social media, everybody was excited on social media. People were talking, everybody was speaking English, oh my goodness. And I, and I thought critically to myself, this lift that they do, or they, they plan to do, how does it affect the woman I said in Bali? How does it affect the bus driver? How does it affect those guys on the streets? Those of us, middle class, who are on the social media, we were so excited. I'm talking, I was, I think the whole nation was excited. But the whole nation wasn't excited because the majority mm. are not on social media. The majority are on the streets, hockey. Okay. The majority are on the streets. Okay. So, so these the are the point? ones that, and then you, my point is that these middle class, us, mm. we carry our money to Dubai, but we need dollars. But I have to change my naira to dollar 
to go to travel to Dubai. What are you doing? I am still mopping up the dollar that the, the small so, dollar so, that we so, have. So, and that has an effect. Hope. Let me finish that. That has an effect on the driver, on the hawkers, on the real Nigerians. It has a serious effect. So we are not we are being selfish. When we are here excited about oh the ban, how does it affect the, the people on the street, the real the real Nigerians? Mm -hmm. so, so the I, point is okay. that that's I'll let you respond. Yeah. The point is that when we are all saying this excitement, mm -hmm. how does that how does it affect, that we do we truly care? about those guys on the streets we don't okay, we only care about okay. our ability okay. to be able to go okay fantastic to, to we will care to the best of our caring but we will not over care more than the government because you forget that everybody is not all fingers are not equal and people would work based on the level that they find themselves so you are telling somebody who is excited that they lifted dubai uh, ban should not be excited because somebody else is selling bole on the streets it's the job of the government to cater for the person that's selling bole because no no hold on hold on even in my excitement i have my constituency that i'm catering for i cannot cater for the whole nigeria that's not my job no 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 mm -mm. Oh, understand what i'm trying to say i cannot cater for everybody because it's not my job the people who have been elected to do that job should do that job I am doing my own bits by catering for my immediate environment and doing all the good things that I do and all of that. That's my own bit. Okay. But don't give me government's responsibility mm -hmm. and blame me mm -hmm. for what is going on in the country. You cater for your people, I cater for my own. Okay. If you need us to meet, they've said now that sometimes, do you know how many times you go to the bank and you don't get the USD? Mm -hmm. You don't get it. And nobody dies. Nobody mm -hmm. kills anybody. Okay. We move on to that. But up. governments must make sure that the poor and vulnerable and well taken care of. Mm. The it's not, our, it's not my job. This taste mm. is the hard lack or uh, you know the scarce resources. Dollar is not plenty. It's not available. But the the taste of the uh, middle class yes, is to, go, to go to Dubai. Yes. Dubai don't they give anybody still. They only give work permits and yeah. they give you visas to come and use their facilities or their tourist facilities. You pay, and we've just mopped out the dollar that will be scarce for that. Uh, you know, making the Naira weak. Yeah. They're not thinking of that consequence. If you give up that taste and travel within the country to other tourist uh, attractions within, within the country, will it not trickle down? Yeah. It will create employment for Nigerians and, you know, are we looking at it that way? Wow. We cannot be, no, we can't be so, selfish and be Nigerian. Wow. We, so, 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 me, that's no, not what I to have. Wait, middle class, hold on. How many percent is this middle class you're talking so, about? Wait, no. When the middle class decides to cater for the rest mm -hmm. of Nigerians by not traveling, the leaders... Mm -hmm. Who have the sole oh, responsibility join. will travel and then join. And allow the middle class to do their job. All of them now join. For no, 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 no. The Nigerian who is minister of importing their own saying they're that their taste is no they're longer they're Nigerian, it has to be foreign. That Nigerian who is using his cash resources to go and feed their own. You have to wrap up. You see, the reason why I have to highlight that because I like to continually remind us. I agree with that point. With Nigerians that we have a role because let's not go for Santa Claus to come and give us doing his speeches. Ah, this one I'm dashing you. It's not of anything. We also actually. have a responsibility to this. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying that we are all part of this problem. We and are. we must acknowledge it. That's my issue. Yeah. Let's go to a break. When we come <laughs> back. We'll bring in the minister to tell us exactly what her plans are uh, concerning um, humanitarian. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be... Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women.
So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, ladies and gentlemen, multiple award-winning actor, producer, ambassador of Edo people, we have Etinosa Idemudia in the building! <laughs> Not be first to go police station, they win the case. Is so she? you don't, you are showing no, yourself. I go, I go see that's my second you question. You are feeling like a, a contact the prancing peacock. I'm about to cut your wings. Hello? Now, in the amalgamation of 1914, who was the woman that. who said, who drew the line of the amalgamation? The, who, who, cut, who cut the report? Who is the person that used to support it? That woman. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, Thanks for staying with us. All right, so we're supposed to have the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Dr. Betta Edu, who was supposed to be our guest this morning, but she just told us that she had to leave. So unfortunately, maybe another time we'll bring her on. Um, but we really wanted to discuss with her um, the steps to take, especially with this issue of palliatives, how to get to the poor. It was important for us to speak to her, but hopefully we'll have her some other time. So we'll just go back to what we were talking about earlier, because we started the debate concerning um, the role of the citizens, the role of the government, uh, and the role of those of us who have, who are in the middle class. I, and people always criticize me of trying to, I'm always blaming the middle class. Is it, is, it, is it by force? But it's important for us to also see where we are in this puzzle because the president will say, Nigeria is a house. We're all in different rooms, mm -hmm. right? So if we're all in different rooms, there's a room the middle class is, where they're serving caviar, they're serving sausages, they're serving bacon, they're serving all, that's the room you are in. Yes. We need the middle class who are eating all these Oyimbo food to come back to the rooms where other people understand. Listen, we don't need this right now. We need to find a way to review our taste and our, 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 our demands and our likes so that all of us in the whole house can be fed. Because if I keep eating this kind of nice chicken and rubbing this, <coughs> other people in the other rooms will not have access. So it's all seeing the bigger picture. And I'd like to come to you because I know that um, you, you, you have a different perspective on this matter. So let me tell you the truth. Mm. There is no middle class in Nigeria. Mm. They're either poor or rich. Mm. And I'm saying it with my full chest. If with all the work you're doing, all the hustle you're doing, you get up to one million naira a month, you are rich. You're a millionaire. In Nigeria. In Naira. So on this one that you are deceiving yourself, Mariah, with middle class, you are not a middle class, we are rich. So we have she the poor. One million in hold on. Ah, if you don't know, let us let us go for a bridge. Hold on. 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 Hold on country and the middle class you are shouting i've already said there's nothing like middle class in nigeria there are people who are rich who have worked hard for their money who because of their exposure have exposed taste their taste board how you tell the column is now in foreign. foreign and imported you cannot stop them what you can do as a responsible government is to ensure that they pay double for that thing that they want. So if they can afford it, they can get it. Let them pay double. They pay, the people who are importing all of those things will pay heavy tax on it. That tax will be transferred to the consumer. So you want to eat sausage and you have beef here. You consider now your sausage is like 5,000 naira a packet and your beef is 1,000 a packet. You go for your beef. If you can afford your sausage, you should not be crucified for being able to afford your sausage. But government is not doing that. And so it seems like the people who have that foreign taste are now committing crime by deciding to eat that. By the time you tax that is very expensive, only those who have the money or those who want to spend the money will do that. And that's okay. We're not running a socialist community. Mm. This is a capitalist system. Mm. And people will never be equal. And what government does is to ensure that they tax the people who are perceived yeah. to have 
that much so that they can cater for that cater for the vulnerable and the poor persons it's not the job of those people they do their csr and all of that in their organization and all of that you know how many people that you send money to down the line in your family if you come from a very poor home you do that at your capacity but government will not leave this job for you to be thinking for them what they are supposed to do that is where i have a problem okay okay i'll agree to, with you to some extent i pray god help me say this calmly you see <laughs> This Nigerian says, we, we see where it has brought us, mm. but we live in a denial. Mm. Constantly. We would rather blame someone else. Until we agree to carry our responsibility, yeah. we might stay longer where we are. Yeah. Nigerians will tick on a ticket. How many times a year they go to another man's country to call it enjoyment? Nigerians will tick on, another ex on a non-existing table. How educating themselves from their own roots is bad until they go to another man's country to be educated. Please, who will tell you that something good is in your backyard? That man is educating their children to come and turn your own to resources and educating you to see your own as waste. We don't see it like that, but we'll fight for that foreign exchange to go and get it at what cost to remain where we are. Is it not to vacate? I'll be vacation. Lose, use the available resources here. Worst case, vacate in your house. Uh, tell them go Wait, oh, I'm coming somewhere. Save the dollar <coughs> for the important exchange. Mm. I'd rather see Nigerian businessmen mm. go abroad the way these Asians come here and use that and we're paying for us for that to earn that money and bring it back up the way they take our own back. Not I just went to Dubai and you know you do a picture. I just want Gucci it's not that's not luxury. That's a mentality you need to change. Mm. I don't want to call it what it is, what Vela called it, but it's a mentality you need to do away with. Wow. Now, let's look at this jackpot mentality they've sold us because everybody is in the embassy. Nigerians are converting hard and naira to their foreign currencies, empowering their currencies to go there and take jobs that they claim exist. Today, we are now seeing Nigerians doing video, you call out, call out, call out, call out, waiting they happen, go, go. Why are we not trying to make this place good? Why is this? Why does it look so impossible to do? Hey. When Singapore released their video, I was watching one Singaporean something on my husband's phone yesterday, and I was like, "If you tell this to a Nigerian, they will just slap you. They will tell you you are a dream killer, everything, because we are in our religious places. Pray for visa to come." Yeah. I don't get it. You know, you know, that, this country, this country was great, not on petrol. By the time our uh, Olowo built Ife built the cocoa house we were on agriculture yeah. in my village where my ancestors were farmers it they are selling land yeah. they are not farming again yes my, my mother you know has cannot, land that they, they just they, we cannot hate what god gave us and expect it to go I, I I and i'd like to open our phone lines please call us on 0817 please call in to join the conversation um i think was it last week or two weeks ago so somebody close to me was taking me around every money you have Please, go on, put it to dollar. Dollar is going to then dollar haven't gone to a thousand. Mm. It was nine hundred or something. Said Maria, go and change your money now. And I said no. I insisted. The person said Maria, you have to because I know. And I said even if my naira becomes paper, I am. She means my own naira. Mm. I will leave it as that because I made that choice mm. personally. And I'm saying that because before you and and, and, and even God my witness, because I I know that I must be intentional about my participation in Nigeria's development. Mm. So that is how we want. I would like Nigerians, more Nigerians, to think. Mm. But you see, it's not about me securing me myself and I. Mm. So yeah, no, no, how no, do no. I ensure that I am part of this? I'm not saying government doesn't have their own responsibility because I agree. BC mm. government cannot in any way be removed or or, 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 or removed from this from this their responsibility. They must also own up to where, where they are because they also travel mm. they do medical tourism absolutely mm. yeah. they must also be stopped by agree there should be policies stopping them but we as the people that we that can afford it should also we think the, the, what our our tests and desires are we not are trying you no, okay. no, let me just no, say no, 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 we let cannot we ca so so the thing is um I, I agree with you on the part that we all have to be responsible yeah. and that's why some of us are staying back mm in the country to make it work some of us are building businesses here somebody was having a conversation with me which day and i was you know talking about the guy that came to advertise the pineapple farm i was considering it do i do i have change to do that with everything i'm doing right now do i and the person was like why are you still planning to invest more here mm. 
why why don't you move your investments and i'm like but this is my country i have to grow in my country i have also opportunity to you know convert my money to the, the money is not even enough to even convert to the usd it will finish you know i left it so I what i did you i'm okay? sorry because i'm sure the minister is here oh, so please can you hold that thought i hope i don't forget it yeah, right. <laughs> don't forget but i need that thought but let's go in uh, let's take in our minister good morning madam are you there dr beta edu Minister for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Dr. Beta Edu. Welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. All right, so one of the first questions Nigerians want to know, especially concerning your ministry, is how you intend to assist the president in getting palliatives, humanitarian help. Pretty, um, I hope to actually end hunger or hope to improve the economy and um amongst his eight point agenda and that's what he stands for that's what he represents the president is very passionate about nigerians he's a nigerian and he's a committed one at that that fought for democracy and he's very interested in ensuring that nigerians all over are truly truly impacted by his administration um he's made some very bold decisions some decisions that other um administrations weren't able to make for several reasons but he's made those bold decisions to save the economy to sh save nigeria from a co hello i think we lost her look let me go on a quick break hopefully we can have her back shortly stay with us we'll be right back Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> a lot of programs, lots of national activities, lots of implementation is needed to achieve this. Working together with those at the state and those at the local government level. And we are going to be doing everything within our past to ensure that some of these programs, of course, um, includes the conditional cash transfer, which will be based on the National Social Register, um, the Vocational Skills Youth Program, um, the Empower, the Jeep Loans, which is providing loans, um, non-interest loans to Nigerians that um, micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as... Um, uh, creating employment and giving digital skills uh, to Nigerians that are poor and need to be elevated from this bracket. Right. The point is, one, we want to do all our programs in a sincere and transparent manner. We want to see the impact at the grassroots. We want to deal with the people who truly need the support at the grassroots. Okay. Uh, Honorable Minister, one of the criticism, of course, is that, you know, there are no um, data for these people. I like the numbers, the areas that you have reached out, that you have touched, you know, the most downtrodden. But what data are you relying on to ensure that people actually get this money, not, you know, some fictitious uh, group of people? So we have the National Social Register, which has about 15.7 million households, which amount to about 62 million um individuals in the national social register we also have the rapid response register we have all the data from the national bureau uh, of statistics and several other um uh, ministry housed data that directly points at the multi-dimensional poverty and those who are affected by it this data was gotten by geographical targeting and community targeting what we are presently doing now is to clearly mark those places go back to the field and verify those data and then we can have that integrity 
and confidence to use this data in administering. We've been on the field since Friday, uh, sorry, since Saturday when we flagged off, and we're going all across the country to verify the data that we have already. Now, what we found out, I'll give you an example. When I was, uh, I went to about five communities in Lagos State. These are suburbs uh, and, and some areas in Lagos uh, that are really kind of like remote. We went there on Saturday, and what we realized is, I'll give an example of Makoko. We had areas in Makoko that were covered, and other areas in Makoko that were not covered under this register. And so we spoke with the state governor, and we equally spoke, we spoke with his uh, team on ground to say we need to cover these areas in Makoko and capture these people. And then other places where we find such um, uh, discrepancies or people who were not included but are poor and are living under $1.95 per day, we would capture them using the rapid response register and then we would be able to administer both the conditional cash transfer to them as well as other social programs within the social safety net to prevent them from falling into poverty or lift those who are in poverty out of poverty. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to find out um, how you intend to capture, like, what metrics is used. Is it like um, each household or the number of individuals in each household? Because I know that there are some households that have a number of adults living with them. So do you just attend to uh, the household or you attend to the individuals in each household? So there are different interventions. For instance, the conditional cash transfer goes to households. So it's supposed to, in one way or the other, affect the lives of persons within that household, not just one person, but as many persons as possible. So the households who prioritize their need, do we need to pay for the children's school fee? Do we need to subsidize transportation? Do we need to subsidize, uh, improve on our livelihood so that we can get more money for the household? They will prioritize that. Now the GIP program, right, which is the empowerment pro Okay, we kind of froze again. So we're, we'll probably try to link up with her. But I think, um, so, so far she was in Makoko yesterday. And we'd like to also know how she plans to reach out to the other communities. The poor communities outside Lagos. I mean, yes. Makoko yeah, is Makoko. very popular. Everybody yeah, knows Makoko. Yes. Everybody, like, everybody mm. goes there for, go there there. for outreach. But the yeah. real, there are more people out there who are probably even poorer than those living in Makoko who are in various communities across the country. So it would be nice to also hear from the minister how she plans to reach them and who else she's working with in partnerships because I'm sure she can't do it by herself. Yeah. She has partners that, across the nation. Another thing important to me is not to see the kind of cash. Okay, I'm sure she's back. So... Hello, Madam. Are you, are you still there? We lost you for a minute. Are you back? Can you hear me? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Guys. Sorry, it was a uh, that built a uh, break in transmission. Can you hear me now? No, you're still um, not. Yes, never. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll probably still try to bring you on properly um, because we are running out of time right now. But uh, let me see if you are able to just. <laughs> Share with us in a nutshell how you plan to reach other communities across the nation, um, aside from um, Makoko. So we have a team of persons who are on ground meeting with the state governors and the state team, which are, are indeed the steering committee. And then all the way to the grassroots, we're engaging with traditional leaders, community leaders, to see that we truly get the right people. Like I said, it is community targeting and geographical targeting. So we're targeting the community members, working with the locals to identify those who really, really should be on that list. Um, we're deploying these teams across the country, and we intend to get this verification um, reports in the next two weeks. They are already out in the field, and we need to get these reports within the next two weeks. We deploy different teams to <coughs> the different local governments, so the 774 local governments. From that point, they will be working with the communities. Now, we're doing this in collaboration with, of course, the NOA, which um, we all know that they have COMOS, that's community um, officers at the level of the communities. We're also doing this in collaboration with the Nigerian population 
Commission Council that equally have representatives at uh, uh, the local communities. So they would be the best persons to work with us to identify the persons that need to be on that register and then verify those who are already on the register whether we should be keeping them there or we should take them off the register. For us, it's about integrity. There's sincerity of purpose from the part of the president and he wants this to truly get to those who need the soccer at this time and so we plead with nigerians we may not be politically correct in quotes so we might not be taking into consideration political interests we might not be taking into consideration personal and social interests but we want to truly do the right job Subsequently, we will still expand to cover the persons who have been in the uh, uh, reported in the MBS uh, as 133 million, um, of course, multidimensionally poor persons in Nigeria. For this first set, we're dealing with 15 million households. Subsequently, we'll expand this to cover more persons. All right, um, we have to wrap up with you, but I think there's a question of sustainability. It's one thing to give one of those once uh, one off of gifts but i just like to know are there plans on how you know how you travel abroad there's soup kitchen available people can go there to mm -hmm. eat for breakfast lunch, and dinner there are places you can go to pick up your um things you need so is there a long-term plan to sustain some of these handouts to very poor families so like i said it's a 360 intervention right um the, the these are just like immediate response to uh cushion the effect of the first subsidy removal right we're looking at more sustainable plans this includes of course the job creation vocational skills um trader support to build their capital to be able to do better businesses amongst other interventions that are put on the table so the cash to the households is just an immediate uh, plan to cushion the effect right. of the first subsidy removal. Okay. One last question, Ma. Just, just the cash to the households. How are you supposed uh, going to do this? I would rather that you know it's pay, through a bank transfer, so there's a trace. But you know, how exactly do you plan so, to do it? Yeah, it's an electronic transfer from one account to the beneficiary right from the government account to the beneficiary directly there's no middleman there's no, no cash there's nothing it's straight to the beneficiary and this beneficiary must be verifiable with their bbns their biometrics okay. and all of that and what we're trying to do is to sign on the disclosure um, act so that nigerians can have access to who these people are and okay. do independent Perfect. verification of the ministry yeah. that way we can gain the trust <clears throat> of the public in the work President Bola Mentinibu is to it. Mm. And that's quite reassuring. Thank you very much, Dr. Mm -hmm. Beta Edu. And then we'd like to bring you on often to at least give us updates on what your ministry is doing because we definitely need quite a bit of intervention, especially now that the president is promising six months uh, palliative or support to help um, workers. So it would be great to know how far you've gone in the next six months. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so that's all we can take. I mean, PC, are you convinced? Yeah. The government is working. No, 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 no. Ah, please, don't give me a bad name. Oh, you are convinced. I'm, convinced. Yes. Are you convinced? I'm, 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 I'm seeing you. You know, the got progress. Got yes. yes. So what, what I would seeing the progress is what I saw the last administration yeah. where people would just queue up, one will carry shine, the other one will plate, and they're yeah. just collecting cash. Yeah. You know, there's really no trace of that. If somebody is collect, collecting it from them right after, you can't say. But with a bank transfer, mm, it can be traced. Traced. we can verify. Yes, to. and there's an it's a possibility of an audit. If you, if, I, if I come out and say I gave twelve million to twelve million people, twelve million can be Their traced record. to twelve million people. Yeah. Mm. Those twelve million people come aside, come and tell us and what did face. you receive? Did you receive? What did you do with it? And I hope that you know mm. eventually you're going to extend this mm. to the real vulnerable people. Or there should be a platform where people can at least. Yeah. You know, vulnerable. Some people don't know how to get on the platform. Yeah. This data has not caught some people, so I, I'm okay. hoping that... So everybody should do what they are meant to do. Let's not be pushing responsibility to people who are not even there to carry out the responsibility. As a government, do what you need to do to protect your people. As um, a, a rich citizen, do what you need to do to protect your people and protect yourself. As a middle class or a poor person, do what you need to do to protect yourself. However, I know we're talking initially, and I know there's no time. Let me just quickly...
they add this. Um, some persons have always traveled within. Nima kept highlighting, if you want to do vacation, you must do within. But the places they wanted to go, when insecurity started, started they could not go there anymore. So the government needs to fix the insecurity so that people like us can go to yeah, Joss yeah. and go to Kaduna and go to Zamfara yeah, for yeah. holiday because they are right. very beautiful Absolutely. places there. Yeah. Let me end with this comment from engineer Ajibola Tijani. Let me just quote a part of it. He says, we need as a nation to deal with our self-inflicted irresponsible attitude and behavior as individuals first. And this will go a long way to make a positive change. We must speak the truth to ourselves first while speaking truth to power. Mm. Every little effort helps a nation and we must be that change. Thank you very much, Engineer Ajibola, for yeah, always giving us some really good tips. That is all we can take on the show this morning. See you tomorrow.